Catalytic converters. All right, let's start because I keep looking on the internet, on face, on um, shit, on uh, YouTube and everywhere, and I can't seem to find any real good useful information on catalytic converters. Other than the general shit, huh? I, I got automated machines telling me, uh, in an automated voice, bad signs of a catalytic converter and all that bullshit, and it's not helping me. It's not. I, I haven't seen how it's actually helped anybody. Um, obvious signs are, yeah, sluggish power, um, not making it up to speed over 50 miles an hour. Things excessive like back pressure. Excessive back pressure, ticking and shit inside the engine, engine overheating, building up pressure. Things like that are obvious signs of a bad cat. But what about a bad cat that fails emissions? And how do you tell the difference when you're in California or one of these other states? I'm not, but I just don't like the smell that's coming out of my exhaust pipe. Well, first of all, let me tell you this. This is an aftermarket catalytic converter. No aftermarket catalytic converter is made like the factory cat, unless it's bought from the manufacturer, from the dealership. Okay? They have precious metals in them. This one does not. This one has nothing but. Uh, this is a Walker brand catalytic converter. This is $450 right here. You're looking at, it used to be $300. The price has risen in two years. I don't know why. But this is a cheaply made catalytic converter for aftermarket. But this is a direct replacement fit for Econoline vans for 5.4 liter and 6.8 liter V8. What I don't understand is why this thing only weighs 7 pounds or 8 pounds, 750. And the one that came off this truck that was clogged up weighed 60 to 70 pounds. My only, my only conclusion is, is that it's got plenty of precious metals inside. This does not have all those precious metals. First of all, the two-chamber or the big bullet-style cat like this. The torpedo, I The think. torpedoes, especially when they have more than one chamber, several chambers, they're worth, at a scrapyard, from 300 at a low-ball figure, all the way up to 900. They got like a premium, yeah. All the way up to not no. For the same cat off of one of these vans. So if yours gets stolen, that's what's being paid out on it. That's why. <laughs> and that's why, because of the precious metals inside. So, that wasn't the case with me. I didn't get mine stolen, I just have a bad cat. Uh, but it's only partially bad. Let me explain. If I went and had this van hooked up to a, an emissions test, it would fail immediately. That's only at an idle. Now, on the interstate, or the highway, or the freeway, whatever you want to call it, up to speed, 60, 70 miles an hour for a few minutes, the catalytic converter would do something called igniting, or um, it would get itself up to temperature. Yeah, pretty much. It, here's where you, Heat up. Here's yeah. here you take, you take your thermo gun, and you hold it at the same distance and shine the light, right on the weld here before and you shine it right after here to get a temperature reading on the cat before. this is before this is after what i'm getting is i don't know 250 degrees here at an idle and 150 degrees here at an idle coming off the interstate and highway freeway running the crap out of this truck with a good engine with a good emission system because I just replaced the engine, by the way. It doesn't burn any oil. This is the old engine right here. It's burning up, burning oil, and it was dumping coolant. So that's and, probably why the other one. So the other one that. probably failed due to burning oil and also partially clogged or damaged because of antifreeze. Antifreeze going into the port here and melting the honeycomb down uh, or damaging the fiberglass in here. I mean, I'm sorry, the ceramic. So my conclusion is, is that can you have a partially bad catalytic converter and not really know it and fail the emissions test? Well, sure you can. Well, how do you diagnose that? Well, first of all, the catalytic, the catalytic converter has to reach the temperatures that I'm reaching when I get off of the interstate or freeway and immediately drive home, park it, put it in park, leave it running, get out and check it. I got 500 degrees here. 
I got somewhere around 450 to 500 here. But still within a good. Yeah. I know that this catalytic converter is nice and red hot inside, and it's burning off all those nasty fumes. And the exhaust doesn't smell so bad. And the exhaust smells great. And I don't have a ticking sound coming from the passenger side of my intake manifold. That sounds like excessive back pressure pushing back on the valves, like there's an intake leak. I mean, I'm sorry, an exhaust leak. That's another symptom. Uh, about five minutes or ten minutes of idling passes. This thing must cool down. I start getting a tick. I get out like clockwork. I got about 300 degrees here. And about 250 here. Wait another five minutes. I got 250 here. I got 150 degrees here in the back. Cools down. So it's cooling down on its own at an idle. That means that the catalytic converter could be partially broken in one side and or clogged on one side or possibly melted down on one side and letting it flow through and getting hot enough to burn off the exhaust gases. Or there's nothing wrong with my catalytic converter. My engine just isn't up to operating temperature to set off this. My fuel mixture is running too lean or too rich. Most of all, probably too rich. Well, the thermostat's opening too early. Or the thermostat, which they don't talk about very much, is, is opening too early and allowing the engine to run at a cooler temperature than it's recommended. In other words, my, temp, my thermostat is... Never getting to operating temperature. Never getting the engine up to operating temperature. Or I have a leaky injector, which is not my case because my engine wouldn't idle so smoothly, it would idle rough and run kind of rough and it doesn't. So what, and I, I don't notice any real significant power loss, however there is some power loss. So this is kind of an overview of the intermediate problems surrounding catalytic converters. The first thing that happens is, is you smell that eye burning NOx emission smell. That's burns your nose and that eyes. That burns your eyes, your nose, and it smells worse than a 1970s vehicle, early 70s vehicle, and below without a catalytic converter. Those don't even smell as bad as the NOx emission smell. So I went through the EGR valve. Everything related to the emission system. Fuel evac. Found nothing wrong. Intake leaks that could cool off this catalytic converter faster. No problem there. Everything's operating properly. No check engine lights. Everything's operating properly. So what do you do when you have that smell, no check engine lights, no idiot machines to hook up, and no super genius smart fellows that know about catalytic converters that want to post their interesting findings on the internet. All they do is talk, talk, talk on forums about egg, rotten egg smells. Well, I'm not getting a rotten egg smell. I'm getting a burn your fucking eye out smell. So how do you deal with that? Well, we bought a $400 catalytic converter. We're going to go in underneath, take the other one off, and we're going to find out what the problem is. We're going to replace the catalytic converter and see if this engine reaches its operating temperature to burn off the exhaust emissions at an idle, as opposed to, and we're going to see if we get that ticking to stop permanently so the first thing we need to do is show you what the inside looks like. So a lot of people don't show you what the inside looks like. And that you can actually see through the thing to the back side. If you hold it up in the light, you can. Turn the light off to that camera. Yeah. Can you see? Yep, see the light out in front. Okay. Now this thing must have the honeycomb throughout right here. Here and here, or maybe there's a separation here and it's just two here. Don't know. It could be the back one that's bad. I doubt it because it's cooler down here than it is here. This one could be cracked in half. I don't know. <sighs> so, we're going to find out. My guess is coolant went in from the old engine that had problems. The other catalytic converters in aftermarket, the exact same one as this. It only lasted two years. However, we had a coolant leak and we kept putting block sealer in it. And maybe the block sealer got mashed in the honeycomb and it's all stuck in there. Coolant, maybe, so. maybe maybe the coolant cracked the, the honeycomb, but there is no shake, shake, shake. So we don't know. We'll find out when we pull it off. Now, first thing I want to do is let you hear. Second thing I want you to do is let you hear the ticking sound 
it comes from under the truck. Okay, so we're up on blocks. You can get up underneath there and look at how that catalytic converter is back further back here where it's mounted. We check the manifold for leaks and breaks. We check the manifold. The manifold's got brand new gaskets on it. The manifolds are straight. They have no cracks in them. That Y pipe right there that runs both sides of the V8 into one pipe that comes back to one three inch to the catalytic converter is not bad. That does, that's not damaged. It doesn't have any holes or rust spots or leaks in it. No exhaust leaks. And the only exhaust leaks is behind the catalytic converter, which is obviously where the previous catalytic converter right here broke at one time or cracked. And don't make fun of the weld unless you want to. But I got somebody to try to weld that up, and that's what it looks like. But it doesn't leak. However, when you shake it, there's no rattling inside. So there's no way to tell unless we take it off. But like I said, we're getting that NOx emissions at an idle. So we're going to start it up and see how it sounds on the passenger side. And I know this is just the audio on a, on a video form. So you can't really tell the true nature of the sound unless you have stereo. Chicken on this side. No, but I can hear it getting a little bit louder. It will get louder. That chicken sound. Go right. to the back. What kind of emissions are we getting out of there? No machines, nothing fancy. Burn your eyes. Oh yeah, Nuki's membrane burn. <laughs> yeah, well that's a sign of NOx emissions coming out of there. That means the Catalytic converter is not hot at an idle. Now, give or take, it takes about three minutes to get up the temperature to start ignite. This thing's already, already warmed this up. Thing's already warmed up. Yeah. Now, here's the kicker. There are two things off the top of my head on this engine that I know would cause this thing to run like this if this catalytic converter were good. One would be the temp sending unit. The temp sending unit, if it was running in a closed loop, would be choking this engine, telling it it's cold outside, and it would be running using a lot of fuel right? using a ton of fuel dumping from the injectors the other the other reason would be is if it were obviously in limp mode right. which is where four coil packs shut off and the injectors cool the cylinders on the 5.4 so <laughs> and you would obviously notice the power loss in that that's not the problem here oh you would also uh, something we have, we are having very bad fuel economy, except for when we're doing a long interstate drive. You notice that? Around a right. city driving, using excessive fuel, and right. way more than we used to when right. we do city driving. So what I think is, there's a problem with the cat, the cat. Uh, I hope the last thing that was said didn't throw you for a loop, because there's a lot of different things that would cause you to, to have problems with fuel economy at a, at a regular idle around the city here and there. But this vehicle does a lot of excessive idling. We've never had fuel loss like that. It's a service vehicle. Yeah, but the fuel loss has slowed down, but we're still getting NOx emissions. Yeah. We've already replaced many different parts on here to diagnose what is good and what is bad. And right now, this is actually choking me out, so we're gonna walk away. pipe loose. Okay, we see that this wants to hang on the hanger here in the front. That hanger needs to be bent upward. And this is how much stress was right here on this pipe. Yeah. Right here. So it could have been putting stress here to bow this cheap ass walker like that. Or it could have been when we had a bad motor mount a year ago. The one that caused the whole engine block, the whole cylinder head crack? The one that shifted the engine sideways, picked up too high, broke the top radiator hose, then added coolant when the engine was too hot. 
Uh, cold water, not coolant. It caused the problem. Yeah, could be. Alright, let's yeah. unbolt this cat. I got the after catalytic converter unplugged. We'll take it out when we get it off. I'm just careful not to drop it and break it. The um, uh, mass air, I mean, the uh, oxygen. Yeah. yeah, oxygen sensor. And then we'll just unbolt the three bolts on the cat, take the flange off. Blow the shit out real quick. about it straight manifold <laughs> in case you were considering going straight wide pipe manifold Ooh, I bet if it was winter time I'd bend some valves but it's distorting the shit out of the microphone 